Hi, hello everyone. Very good morning, one and all. Welcome to the most comprehensive preparation platform for all competitive exams, Baiju's exam prep. And welcome to BARC 2023 Parmanu series. Everybody, every BARC aspirant, join the session quickly and mark your presence. I am Satya, waiting for you all to join the session to practice operating systems for today. Everybody, Join the session quickly. Today, we will practice operating system. As a part of daily practice paper Parmanu series, we will practice operating systems today. Before I start, let me introduce myself quickly. I am Satya with 15 plus years of teaching experience, mentored more than 40,000 students all over India in the GATE and uh, PSU segments. I am qualified in GATE, UGC NET, SET and also certified by Cisco into networking and programming. This is quick brief about me. Whoever have joined the session guys, let me know your presence in the chat box. Please mark your presence in the chat box, everybody. Guys, for GATE 2024 aspirants, we are starting this fundamentals series for electrical, electronics, instrumentation and computer science in which we will be sharing, we will be teaching every basic concept of every subject along with questions. Okay, so you will be ready for the GATE 2024 exam. Guys, from today the classes are happening at 9 p.m. for computer science aspirants, at 9, at 9 p.m. on the YouTube channel, this GATE fundamental series will go on. So, attend regularly and get the most benefit out of it. Hello, Balamurgan, Shyam, Harsh, Arun. Okay. And guys, Richa Gupta Madam, who has pursued her MTech from NIT Raipur will be conducting a free workshop for GATE 2024 aspirants on how to ace GATE with college or job. This will happen today at 7.30 pm. So, without fail, try to attend this if you are a GATE aspirant. Okay, without any delay, I am taking you to the session, to the question array. Here is the first question from operating systems guys match the following process state transitions with its respective system calls under list a we are having running to ready uh, run, runnable to running waiting to ready running to ready new to runnable Yes, what would be your answer for this question? Match the following and the list B is having preempt, admit, resume, dispatch. Arun, Harsh, Shyam, Balamurgan, everybody give your answer please. Okay, Shyam, Balamurgan are telling option C. Okay, okay. What about others? Let us see the process state diagram once. With five states if we take, with five states if we take, the process must enter into new state, from new state Compulsorily, it has to come to ready state. From ready state, CPU once allocate, it moves on to running state. While it is running, if it requires any IO action, then it goes to blocked state. 
that action is completed it go back to ready state once the execution is completed it go to exit state or terminated state with five states this is what the process state diagram now we want system calls which make this process state transition new to ready admit is the system call admit into main memory ready to running dispatch running to blocked or waiting that is wait or block you can say blocked to ready resume and yes exit system call for this and if it supports preemption then while a process is running it may be sent back to ready state for that the system call is preempt or interrupt you can say now runnable state which is also called runnable state ready state is also called as runnable state so runnable to running means ready to running what is the system call dispatch waiting to ready which is called waiting state blocked state is also called as waiting state so waiting to ready resume running to ready preempt and new to ready or runnable admit so the right answer would be 4 3 1 2 yes option c is the right answer correct correct very good very good guys next question question number 2 consider a processor that uses rr3 scheduling algorithm for scheduling two processes arrived at same time with each 14 millisecond burst time how many times each process is preempted how many times each process is preempted solve it guys solve it quickly and give your answer in the chat box and those who have joined kindly like the session and also invite your friends for this very useful session if you know any bark aspirant try to share the session info to them through whatsapp telegram facebook insta wherever you are connected <clears throat> yes what would be the answer for this question let us consider the two processes be let the two processes i am marking them as p0 p1 and each has 14 millisecond burst time and arrived at zero you can say same time means of course it is not mentioned at a zero you can say okay okay uh, balamurgan shyam msd and harsh all are telling five times okay let us see let us see now at a time zero first p not is scheduled for three time units then p1 if i take p0 and p1 with 14 millisecond burst p0 executed for 3 units so more 11 would be there now p1 is executing from 3 to 6 so it is also having more 11 then again p0 will get its turn then it would be having 8 
then P1 it is also having 8 then again P0 then P1 then again P0 then again P1 then again P0 then P1 now at 26 process completed P0 completed so it go to exit state at P1 process go to exit state at 3 at 9 at 15 at 21 this P0 got preempted P0 got preempted and at 6 at 12 at 18 at 24 P1 got preempted preempted means go from running state to ready state so, how many times each process got preempted? Four times. Four times. Not five times. Fifth time, it is not preempted, it is terminated. Here, P not terminated. At this point, P1 terminated. Clear? It would not be 5, it would be 4. So, confused. You know it, but you missed it. So, guys, be careful. That's what I know. Exit state, you can't take it as preemption, right? Okay. Question number 3 on your screen. A thread is usually defined as a lightweight process because an operating system maintain smaller data structures for a thread than for a process. In relation to this, which of the following is true? Options. On per thread basis, the OS maintains CPU register state. The OS maintains a separate stack for each thread. On per thread basis, OS maintains virtual memory state. On per thread basis, the OS maintains only scheduling and accounting information. Here I think these also there. Sahil, Balamurgan, Shyam, MSD, all are telling option B. On per thread basis, OS maintains CPU register state only. Now, along with the CPU registers, it also maintains separate stack. Because of this only, this is false. And OS maintain virtual memory state? No, it is related to process, hence this is false. And OS maintains only scheduling and accounting information? No, that is also false. So, the right answer is option B. Option B. Okay? Next question. 
consider the processes information given below if non preemptive priority scheduling is used with priority calculated as arrival time divided by burst time then dash process finish last zero means high priority okay zero means high priority okay okay msd is telling option c that is the process r okay let us calculate the priority guys how you are calculating the priority arrival time divided by burst time as per the question so 0 divided by 4 0 4 divided by 2 2 9 divided by 3, 3, 6 divided by 1, 6, 6 divided by 2, 3. So, priorities are this. 0 is the high priority. However, at a time 0, we have only one process P available. So, P is scheduled and it is non preemptive in nature. So, P is completed. At time 4, I have only one process, Q, Q is completed. At time 6, I got S and T, S and T, S priority 6, T priority 3. So, T is scheduled first from 6 to 8. Then, still R did not join, still R did not join, R comes at time 9, so we schedule yes from 8 to 9, at 9 R join that is the only process we are having, so 9 to 12, so which process finished last? process are finished last. Clear? Question number 5. Consider the process table given below. Find the sequence of processes completion using HRRN scheduling, HRRN, highest response ratio next. Yes, do it quickly.
श्याम सेस ऑप्शन बी ओके श्याम ऑल राइट ऑल राइट एट अ टाइम जीरो वी हैव ओनली वन प्रोसेस अवेलेबल दट इज प्रोसेस ए so no question which is first which is next because only one process it execute for three units of time now the time is 3 hrrn is non preemptive guys now the time is 3 only process b is available so schedule b 3 to 9 now the time is 9 i have c d e available so at a time 9 at a time t is equal to 9 calculate the response ratio calculate the response ratio for c it would be how do you calculate response ratio burst time plus response time divided by burst time so how do you calculate it c burst time is 4 response time means from arrival till till that time what is the waiting from arrival to till that moment arrival time 4 4 to 9 the waiting time is 5 so 4 plus 5 divided by 4 9 divided by 4 2.25 and response ratio of d burst time 5 arrival time to 9 waiting time is 3 5 plus 3 divided by 5 8 divided by 5 that is 1.6 and e response ratio burst time 2 arrival time to time 9 waiting is 1 By two, so three divided by two, this is one point five. So which has highest response ratio? C has highest response ratio. So schedule C nine to thirteen, it execute. Right now at a time thirteen, response ratios. Let us calculate. response ratio of d would be 5 plus from 6 to 13 what is the waiting time 7 divided by 5 12 divided by 5 that is 2.4 and e response ratio 2 plus 8 to 13 waiting is 5 by 2 7 divided by 2 that is 3.5 so which has highest response ratio e is having highest response ratio so e is scheduled from 13 to 15 now only one process d is left so directly you can schedule 15 to 20 so this is what the completion sequence a b c e d option b is the right answer option b is the right answer msd option b is the right answer clear question number 6 consider the following disk specifications total number of cylinders 100 current head position 40 request sequence given and the scheduling algorithm is scan and how the head is moving towards largest cylinder the total head movement equal to what is the total head movement dear friends very good harsh shyam msd balamurgan sayal malik you are doing good job keep it up
what we have to do first take the surface cylinders are numbered from 0 total 100 so 0 to 99 now arrange the given in the order 5 16 35 current head position 40 42 82 and 96 right now scan scheduling moving towards largest cylinder so it go till 42 then 82 then 96 then 99 why 99 scan goes in that way go till the end so this is what the head movement so total head movement would be mod of 40 minus 99 plus 99 minus 5 so this is 59 plus uh, 94 59 plus 4 63 plus 90 153 153 is the total head movement very good very good harsh shyam balamurgan sayal everybody yes you are the bark scientist guys you are the bark scientist have no doubt very good i appreciate everybody super question number 7 Consider a system with four processes A, B, C and D and four resource types W, X, Y and Z. There are total 6 W, 2 X, 3 Y and 3 Z available initially. The current allocation and Maximum demand of resources is given below. Apply banker's algorithm per resource allocation. Which of the following statement correctly describes the state of the system at last? Okay. And these are the options. All processes finish without any deadlock. All processes will be in the deadlock, A and B will be in the deadlock, A and D will be in the deadlock. And I will write the initial availability for you, 6233, initial availability. Six two three. Okay, solve it. Solve it, dear friends. <clears throat> all right all right i will also do along with you let us work together given the initial availability 6233 after allocation as given, current 
availability let us calculate current availability what would be the current availability c from 6 we have already given 2 plus 3 5 so 1 is the 1w available from 2 we have given 2 so no x and from 3 2 are given 1 x 1 y and from 3 3 are given so 0 z this is the current availability now after this allocation what would be the need current need current need for a 2 minus 2 0 2 minus 1 1 1 minus 0 1 2 minus 0 2 for b 1 0 2 0 for c 1 0 1 0 and for d 2 2 1 0 so this is the current need current need is this now as per the current availability and need only process c we can satisfy only process c request can be satisfied only process c can be served so after allocation to c what would be the availability zero because you are giving one zero one zero so the availability becomes zero now now once c finish its execution it release all the resources that it has so it releases how many all the resources means its max requirement so 2 0 2 0 so after c finish its execution now the availability becomes now the availability will be currently i have no resource now c released 2020 20, so 2020 20 is what the availability and c we have satisfied so c got completed now as per the availability as per the need and availability whose request we can satisfy you can check a you cannot because a is looking for 2g we have no z and D you can't because D is looking for 2x. We have no x. So, B request we can satisfy. Now, only process B can be served. Right? Now, after allocation to B, after allocation to B, what would be the availability? From 2020, I am giving 1020, so 1000 will be availability. Now, B finish its execution and release 2121. So, what would be the current availability now? Latest availability? So, current availability becomes 1000 plus 2121 that is 3121. Now, can you serve A? No. A is looking for 2Z. A want 2Z. We have only 1z. D want 2x. We have only 1x. 
the other x is with a similarly the other z is with d so so a and d will be in deadlock hence the answer is option d correct option d good good very good harsh msd shyam balamurugan and all the others very good guys i hope you are enjoying enjoying these question solving right let's proceed to question number 8 question number 8 on your screen dear friends read the question carefully let m of 0 to m of 4 be mutexes and p of 0 to p of 4 b processes suppose each process p of i executes the following we have two wait operations two release operations if so this could cause options thrashing starvation deadlock none guys it's a previous gate question in the bark exam we can expect pyqs of gate pyqs of isro so i recommend everybody please do solve pyqs of gate and isro at least last 10 years last 10 years okay and if time permits ugc net pyqs also you can solve fine <clears throat> for every process this is what the code given i i plus 1 for process p i so i is the process number now we are having the mutexes m of 0 m of 1 m of 2 m of 3 m of 4 all initialized to 1 initially now for process p not the wait operations would be wait of m of 0 and wait of m of 1 0 plus 1 mod 4 1 mod 4 1 and for process p1 wait of m of 1 weight of m of 2 and for process p2 weight of m of 2 weight of m of 3 for process p3 weight of m of i so m of 3 weight of m of i plus 1 3 plus 1 4 mod 4 would be 0 and for process p4 it would be weight of m of i which is m of 4 weight of m of i plus 1 4 plus 1 5 mod 4 would be 1 so these are what the wait operations now now the worst case is that if all are performing their first wait operation and getting preempted all are doing their first wait operation simultaneously so wait of m of 0 will make m of 0 to 0 wait of m of 1 will make this to 0 process p2 making this 0 process p3 m of 3 0 process p4 m of 4 0 right so all processes are successfully passed this first to wait operation now the second wait operation when they try wait of m of 1 it's a binary semaphore and when the m value is already zero it can't so blocked okay what about p1 m of 2 it is also zero blocked m of 3 is also 
all are zero no so all processes are blocked this is what you said deadlock so all processes will be in the deadlock state yes yes dining philosophers uh, initial code not the solution just <coughs> one of the uh, solutions for philosophers right hence the right answer is option c option c yep question number 9 a paging hardware with a tld assume that entire page table and all the pages are in the physical memory means no page fault means no page fault it takes 10 milliseconds to search tlb and 80 milliseconds to access physical memory if the tlb hit ratio is 0.6 the effective memory access time in milliseconds is yes guys How do you find effective memory access time? If it is a hit, then search in the TLB, get the frame number, get the page. If it is miss with TLB, then search in the TLB, it is miss. Then how many levels of paging you have done? Those many plus one times you have to visit main memory this is without fault without page fault here t1 is tlb access time t2 is main memory access time h is the hit ratio and m is the number of levels of paging here that is 1 nothing is mentioned means you can say single level page so this would be 0 0.6 into 10 plus 80 plus 0 0.4 into 10 plus 1 plus 1 into 80 so this is 0 0.6 into 90 plus 0 0.4 into 10 plus 160 so this is 0 0.6 into uh, 6 nines are 54 you can say fifty four plus point four into one seventy this is fifty four plus sixty eight that is one twenty two milliseconds one twenty two milliseconds option C correct correct very good guys very good now the last question of the day last question of the session let a process is divided into 32 pages that has to be mapped to main memory of size 64 mb the main memory block size is 64 bits if page table is maintaining only mandatory field for each pt then total size of page table would be dash bytes msd no no as of now no and it is almost the gate syllabus here so if you have already prepared for gate exam then the pge exam would be uh, just a cakewalk for you just revise the same kam ho jayega okay process is divided into 32 pages so number of pages 32 So, this would be number of page table entries also. 
now each page table entry is maintaining only mandatory field that is main memory frame number main memory frame number how many bits for the frame number not given but we are given main memory size and block size so number of frames in the main memory would be main memory size divided by frame size or block size that is 64 megabyte divided by 64 bit hold on both are not in the same unit so first you have to convert into same unit so this is 64 megabyte divided by 8 byte so we are having 2 power 23 frames so so main memory frame number would be 23 bits 23 bits now page table size i want so page table size is equal to number of pages or number of page table entries multiplied by every entry size number of entries is 32 and entry size is 23 bits so i can write it as i can write it as 4 into 23 into 8 bits we know 8 bits is 1 byte so it is 4 into 23 bytes which is 92 bytes 92 bytes option d is the right answer msd aptitude ke liye rs agarwal book acha hai rs agarwal book would be good or uh, i think some shakuntala devi i saw some kuch, uh, some book is also there hmm? and our rakesh sir has taken many sessions on youtube and i think uh, all the aptitude in just two days something like that recently Ras rakesh sir has taken just explore our youtube channel you will get the solution okay good guys that's all for today's DPP operating systems and the next class would be tomorrow that is a discrete mathematics DPP at same time 11 a.m. and this would be taken by our beloved D.V. Sridhar sir. Okay, this is my telegram group link. If you have not joined yet to connect with me, please do join. That's all for today guys. Thank you so much for joining the session. Before you leave, click on the like button and also share to your friends and subscribe to our BEP YouTube channel and you will be getting the notifications, updates about all our classes series if you press the bell icon. Thank you guys. Have a great day. Take care. See you in the next session. Till then, bye-bye. PDF I will give in the Telegram group. In the telegram group, I will be posting the PDF right now. Okay? Thank you.